friend! So as many of you know, um, Pride Month is June and that is coming to an end shortly. Um, but since today is June 28th, I thought I would take some time to talk about Stonewall. My intention was to make this the voiceover to a lookbook of Pride outfits, but I felt like that was kind of distracting and I really want people to learn about Stonewall because I didn't know much about it. Um, so I'm gonna try it this way and just make a standalone video of me talking about it instead. With that being said, it is kind of hard to get everything about this right because there's a lot of different accounts of what happened. Um, news outlets were not particularly helpful at the time of Stonewall and it was such a chaotic um, event that the people that were there don't even know fully. Um, kind of what started it. But I looked at as many accounts of it as I could and so I'm gonna do the best that I can to tell this story accurately. I really didn't know much about LGBT history before this month when I really decided to educate myself as much as I could. I really tried to learn more about the Black community, Black history, and then also the LGBT community um, and history because I don't want to be passive in it as a white person, and especially as a white LGBT person. Um, I know what oppression feels like to an extent, but I'm also extremely privileged, and that puts me in a position to help as much as I can, but I also have to make sure that I am continuing to learn while I'm at it because I don't know what it's like to experience racism. I will never know what that's like. But it is so important for us to acknowledge the people and events that got us our rights, especially considering that many of the people who fought for LGBT rights are still the most discriminated against group in America, and that is trans women of color, especially Black trans women and other Black queer folks. Um, so yeah, let's learn about this. The Stonewall Inn was a gay bar in Greenwich Village that opened in 1967. Initially, Stonewall served mostly white cis gay men, but eventually they opened their doors to allow the rest of the LGBT community. Throughout the 60s, police raids of presumed gay bars were relatively common. In New York at the time, it was illegal to show any signs of homosexuality. This included kissing, holding hands, or dancing with the same sex. Because of this, most of the gay bars in New York City at the time were owned by the Mafia, who would pay police to look the other way, or at least pay them so that they would be tipped off before a raid happened. The Mafia got out of this that they could upcharge, um, they could serve watered-down drinks for a high amount of money because these people had nowhere else to go. People liked to come to Stonewall because it was one of the few places where gay couples could dance together and be together with less fear. But on June 24th, 1969, police raided the Stonewall Inn, targeting them for not having a liquor license, and they began arresting employees. After this, they planned another raid for a few days later, and they hoped that that would shut the bar down for good. On the night of June 27th, they raided again, this time with no tip-off. Undercover cops were already inside waiting for the rest of the police to arrive. The police arrested employees again, but they also targeted drag queens. At the time, it was illegal in New York to dress like the opposite sex. In typical raids of this time, patrons were asked to line up, then they separated those dressed as women and had a female cop take them to the bathroom where each person was forced to prove their physical sex. Anyone who was physically male but dressed as a woman was then arrested. But this time people refused to line up and they refused to show their IDs. So police began arresting anyone who was not cooperating. Those that weren't arrested gathered outside watching everything unfold. During the early hours of the 28th, patrons began throwing things and yelling at police. It's unclear how the protest began, but many say it started with Stormy De La Verie, I hope I'm pronouncing her name right, a mixed lesbian woman who was well known in the drag community at the time for being the only drag king at the Jewel Box Review, which was the first racially integrated drag show. She had been head over the head with a police baton and was bleeding and struggling and saying that her handcuffs were too tight when she turned to the crowd and asked, why don't you guys do something? This is when the famous first brick was thrown. The popular theory claims that Marsha P. Johnson, a well-known activist and black trans woman, threw the first brick, but Marsha later said that she had not actually arrived at Stonewall until an hour and a half later after she'd heard news of what was going on and went to look for her friend, another trans woman of color, Sylvia Rivera. Other accounts say that it was Jackie Hormona who threw the first brick, but it seems more likely that it was Zazu Nova, a different black trans woman who we know very little about. 
Sylvia Rivera also gives credit for the start of the uprising to Tammy Novak, another trans woman who supposedly fought back as the police tried to push her into the police van. Regardless, after the crowd began to fight back, the police barricaded themselves within the bar, waiting for more NYPD officers and the tactical patrol force to arrive. The protest continued until about 4 in the morning on the 28th when things began to settle. On the next night, despite the damage done by the cops, Stonewall reopened. They weren't serving alcohol this time, but people still gathered in order to show support. This time, when the police arrived, an even bigger group of the tactical patrol force came too. They began beating and tear-gassing patrons until they dispersed. LGBTQ activists continued to show up at Stonewall every night between June 29th and July 3rd. Though Stonewall didn't start or end the gay rights movement, it was a huge turning point. Many LGBTQ folks at the time say that they went from hiding behind closed doors with only a peephole to see out to openly kissing in the street. Stonewall showed how powerful communities could be in numbers and it led to more organized efforts. People learned that they didn't have to accept the oppression just because that's the way it had always been. People returned to the Stonewall Inn a year later on June 28, 1970 to march. This evolved over the years into the annual Pride celebration we now know. If you are a member of the LGBTQ community and you are not actively supporting the Black Lives Matter movement now, you need to remember that we would not have the rights we have today without Stonewall and without trans women of color fighting against the police. Change is never comfortable, but it is essential to progress in society. Like Desmond Tutu said, if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. We must be consistent allies to the black community and the trans community, uplifting their voices and not speaking over them. That means continuing to donate and sign petitions and go to protests and call out your friends and family on their microaggressions. It means taking these actions when no one else is watching. We were not taught our true history in America, so we have to be dedicated to learning for the rest of our lives. We have to recognize our own biases and fight against them every day. We have to be willing to take criticism and learn from it and strive to be better allies. That is the only way we will have true change in this country. And if you are not fighting for equality intersectionally, you're not actually fighting for equality. There's so much more to learn about with Stonewall and the gay rights movement in general that I don't have time to talk about. So I encourage everyone to seek the knowledge for yourself. I'll have some resources for further learning and some places to donate in the description. Thank you for watching and happy Pride.